Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating effect size with a paired samples t-test using SPSS and Excel. So I have here in an SPSS data editor fictitious data and I have two variables. I have a pretest variable and a post-test variable. Now let's assume that these variables measure depression levels and we have 50 pairs of scores representing 50 participants. So this is repeated measures. So for participant 1, you have a pretest score of 44 and a post-test score of 42. So between the pretest and the post-test, you would have applied some sort of treatment. So you want to see if there's a statistically significant difference between the pretest and the post-test, but you also want to be able to calculate the effect size. That is, you want to know the magnitude of the difference between the two variables. So we'll start by conducting the paired samples t-test in SPSS. So I'll go to Analyze, then Compare Means, then Paired Samples t-test. This is also referred to as a dependent samples t-test. It's the same statistic. So this is the dialog that opens for paired samples t-test. You can see you have pair one and then the variable one and variable two. We're just going to put pretest into variable one and post-test into variable two. We're not going to make any changes under options. Just click OK. And we'll take a look at the output from the paired samples t-test. So you can see here in paired sample statistics, we have the mean for the pretest and the post-test. The sample size, of course, is 50. And it returns the standard deviations and the standard errors of the mean. It also provides you with the correlation down here in the next table. But of the most interest will be the table labeled paired samples test. And you can see there are a few different statistics that it provides us. The mean, the standard deviation, the standard error of the mean, the 95% confidence interval, both upper and lower, the value of t, the value of the t statistic, degrees of freedom, and the p-value. In this case, the p-value is 0 0.003. So if we're using an alpha of 0 0.05, we would have a statistically significant result here. We would say there's a statistically significant difference between the pretest scores and the post-test scores. So now to calculate the effect size, I'm going to move over to Excel. And you can see I have this Excel worksheet configured to calculate Cohen's D for a paired samples t-test. And there are two equations up here at the top. Cohen's D equals the mean divided by the standard deviation and Cohen's D equals the T statistic value divided by the square root of the sample size. Both formulas will return the same result. I'm going to show you how that works by calculating each formula separately and consequently returning the value for Cohen's D using each formula. And then I'll show you how to interpret the value of Cohen's D. So let's take a look at the first method. We have D equals the mean divided by the standard deviation. So the numerator using this first formula would be the mean. So we go back and take a look at the output. We see the mean was 2.34 and the standard deviation 5.351. So move back to Excel. So this will be 2.34 for the numerator. And then for the denominator, 5.351. And then the equation, the function for Cohen's D would be equal sign the numerator divided by the denominator. And that returns 
So now let's calculate Cohen's d by the other method. That's the t statistic divided by the square root of n. So again, moving back to the output from SPSS, we know the n is 50. And here we can see the t statistic is 3.092. So moving back to Excel. So we'll first put in the 3.092 for the t statistic. And we know the denominator is the square root of the sample size. So this will be equal sign and then SQRT and then 50. It's the sample size. So you can see 7.071. And then again to get Cohen's D, we'll just take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. So it'll be equal sign, the T statistic divided by the square root of the sample size. And you can see we do get the same value, 0.4373. So now for the interpretation of Cohen's D, we can see we have three values here, small, medium, and large, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0.8. And these are really just general guidelines. So we can see for our Cohen's D value, let's just say it's 0.44, rounding it up, this would be a small effect size. It's between 0.2 and 0.5. And again, these just represent general guidelines in terms of values. The effect size, the meaning of the effect size, may be different depending on the nature of the study. So what does Cohen's D tell us, strictly speaking? Well, in this case, with a value of roughly 0.44, it tells us that the difference between the two sample means is 0.44 standard deviation units from zero. Now, of course, zero is going to be the hypothesized difference between the two means. Cohen's D is using standard deviation units to express the magnitude of the difference between the two variables. So it's a measure of how important the difference is. So if we look back at the SPSS output, we could see we have a statistically significant result. But that doesn't always mean that the difference is important. Rather, significance just tells us that it's not likely that the difference occurred through random error alone. And in this case, there's only a 0.3% chance that this difference would be observed through random error alone if the null hypothesis were true. Cohen's D tells us how important the difference is. So when analyzing data using a paired samples t-test, it's important to calculate the p-value, but also calculate the effect size. And really the same could be said for any inferential statistic. I hope you found this video on calculating the effect size for a paired samples t-test to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.